Shadow of the Colossus, released in Japan as Wonder and the Colossus, is an action-adventure game published by Sony Computer Entertainment for the PlayStation 2. The game was released in North America and Japan in October 2005 and PAL Territories in February 2006. It was directed by Fumito Ueda and developed at SCEI's international production Studio One, also known as Team ICO, the same development team responsible for the cult hit ICO. Shadow of the Colossus is considered a spiritual successor to ICO, along with ICO. Shadow of the Colossus was re-released in the ICO in Shadow of the Colossus collection for the PlayStation 3 in September 2011. It features high-definition graphics, content previously missing from the North American version, PlayStation Network trophies, and 3D support. The HD version was released separately in Japan. The game's storyline focuses on a young man named Wanda who enters a forbidden land. Wanda must travel across a vast expanse on horseback and defeat 16 massive beings, known simply as Colossi, in order to restore the life of a girl named Mono. The game is unusual within the action-adventure genre in that there are no towns or dungeons to explore, no characters with which to interact and no enemies to defeat other than the Colossi. Shadow of the Colossus has been described as a puzzle game, as each Colossus or weakness must be identified and exploited before it can be defeated. Cited as an influential title in the video game industry, Shadow of the Colossus is often regarded as an important example of video game art due to its minimalist landscape designs, immersive gameplay and emotional journey. It received wide critical acclaim by the media and was met with strong sales compared to ICO, due in part to a larger marketing campaign. The soundtrack was also widely praised. The game won several awards for its audio, design, and overall quality. Today, the game is widely regarded as one of the greatest video games of all time. Shadow of the Colossus is also referenced numerous times in debates regarding the art quality and emotional perspectives of video games. Gameplay Basics Progression through Shadow of the Colossus occurs in cycles. Beginning at a central point in an expansive landscape, the player seeks out and defeats a colossus and is then returned to the central point to repeat the process. To find each colossus, Wanda may raise his sword while in S unlit area to reflect beams of light, which will converge where the sword is pointed in the right direction of the next encounter. The journey to a colossus is seldom a straightforward matter. Stretches of varied terrain often require that a detour be taken along the way. Most colossi are located in remote areas, such as atop cliffs or within ancient structures. Once a colossus is found, the player must discover its weaknesses to defeat it. Each colossus dwells in a unique lair, and many colossi cannot be defeated without making use of the surrounding environment. Every colossus has at least one weak point, indicated by a glowing sigil that can be illuminated and identified by the sword's reflected light. Each colossus has areas covered with fur or protruding ledges which Wanda may use to grip and scale the Colossus while it thrashes about in an attempt to dislodge him. While scaling a Colossus, the player must act quickly, as Wanda has a limited stamina gauge that decreases while he hangs onto the creature. Wanda and the Colossi have life bars to indicate their remaining health. A Colossus' a health will decrease significantly when its weak points are attacked. While Wanda can be harmed by a Colossus or attacks or a fall from great height, while the Colossi are the only enemies, there are natural animals in the environment. Only one species, however, has any effect on gameplay. Eating the tail of a certain kind of lizard increases Wanda's stamina gauge. Likewise, the player may find fruit that increases Wanda's maximum health. Agro and the environment Wanda's horse, Agro, plays a large role in the game. In addition to serving as a means of transportation, fighting from horseback is vital to defeat some of the colossi. There are, however, many environments that cannot be traversed by horse. 
and colossi often inhabit areas within deep water or beyond large obstacles that must be scaled. Agro cannot travel beyond these, and when separated from wonder by such obstacles, cannot participate in the following battle. Agro is referred to as a male in the English language version of the game, though director Fumito Ueda said that he saw Wanda's horse as female. The environment must be used to the player's advantage more often as the game progresses. The first two battles take place on simple, large, flat areas of land, with the only goal being to discover how to scale the colossi and attack their weak points. However, the majority of the following 14 battles require that some aspect of the battlefield be used. Plot and Setting During Shadow of the Colossus the player receives little information concerning the backstories of the characters and their relationships with one another. The game takes place in a fantasy setting, with most of the game's events occurring within a vast and unpopulated peninsula, known as the Forbidden Land, separated from the outside world by a mountain range to its northern sea to the south and east. The presence of ruins and other ancient structures indicate the area was once a settlement. The region is only accessible via a small cleft in the mountains to the north, leading to a massive stone bridge. This bridge spans half the distance of the landscape and terminates at a large temple called the Shrine of Worship, located at its center. It is, however, forbidden to enter the land, which is characterized by diverse geographical features, such as lakes, plateaus, canyons, caves and deserts in addition to human-made structures. Characters The protagonist of the game is Wanda, a young man whose goal is to resurrect a girl named Mono. Little is known about Mono other than that she was a maiden who was somehow sacrificed because she was believed to have a cursed destiny. Wanda and Mono were designed with long hair from the start of the design process, with Mono's long hair specifically as a contrast to order of ICO who has short hair. Assisting Wanda in his quest to revive her is his loyal horse, Agro, who serves as his only ally in defeating the Colossi. Wanda also receives aid from an entity called Dorman. The story revolves around these characters but features a small supporting cast including Lord Emmon. Speaking with two voices at once, Dorman is a mysterious, disembodied entity. In Legends of the Games World, it is said that Dorman has the power to revive the dead. It is for this reason that Wanda enters the Forbidden Land, seeking its assistance in reviving Mono. Dorman offers to revive her in exchange for Wanda destroying the 16 Colossi. Dorman, which spells Nimrod backwards, has been speculated to be a reference to the body of the biblical king Nimrod which was cut up and scattered. Lord Emmon is a shaman who narrates a vision in the game's introduction, vaguely explaining the origin of the land Wanda has come to, and emphasizing that entry to this place is forbidden. He is portrayed as having extensive knowledge regarding the containment of Dorman and the ability to use powerful magic. He has a small group of warriors at his command, and is pursuing Wanda to prevent the use of the forbidden spell. The ritual involving the destruction of the 16 Colossi and the restoration of Dorman's power. The Colossi are armored, most often enormous creatures with forms ranging from various humanoids to predatory animals, and live in all manner of surroundings and environments including beneath water and flying through the air. Their bodies are a fusion of organic and inorganic parts such as rock, earth, fur, and architectural elements, some of which were weathered or fractured. Some colossi are peaceful and will only attack when provoked, while others are aggressive and will attack on sight. Inhabiting specific locations in the Forbidden Land, they do not venture outside their own territory. Once slain they will remain where fallen, as a mound of earth and rock vaguely resembling the original Colossus. Story The story of Shadow of the Colossus begins as Wanda enters the Forbidden Land, traveling across the long bridge at its entrance on his horse. 
Agro. According to Lord Emmon later in the game, prior to entering the Forbidden Land Wanda had stolen an ancient sword, which is the only weapon capable of slaying the Colossi of the Forbidden Land, led to the massive shrine of worship at the center of the region. Wanda carries with him the body of a maiden named Mono. A moment later, several man-like shadowy creatures appear and prepare to attack Wanda before he easily dismisses them with a wave of the ancient sword in his possession. After vanquishing the shadow creatures, the voice of the disembodied entity known as Dorman echoes from above, expressing surprise that Wanda possesses the weapon. Wanda requests that Dorman return Mono's soul to her body, which it states may be possible on the condition that Wanda can destroy the sixteen idols lining the temple's hall by using the ancient sword to kill the 16 colossi located throughout the land. Despite being warned by Dorman that he may have to pay a great price to revive Mono, Wanda sets out to search the land for the colossi and destroy them. What Wanda does not know is that the colossi contain portions of Dorman's own essence that was scattered long ago to render the entity powerless. As Wanda kills each colossus, a released fragment of Dorman enters his body. In time, after slaying his eighth colossus, the signs of Wanda's deterioration from the gathered essence is shown clearly, his skin becoming paler, his hair darker, and dark streaks growing across his face. After the death of the twelfth colossus, it is revealed to the player that Wanda is being pursued by a group of warriors led by Emin. Urged to hurry with his task by Dorman, Wanda soon heads off to defeat the sixteenth and final colossus. On the way to this confrontation, he travels on horseback across a long bridge which begins to collapse as he is halfway across. At the last second when he seems he would not make it, Wanda is thrown to the other side by Agro as the steed saves his master while falling into the river hundreds of feet below as the bridge finally gives way. Soon after, Wanda goes on to defeat the final colossus as Emmons' company arrives in the Shrine of Worship to witness the last temple idol crumble. With a paled and horned Wanda appearing soon, Emmons orders his warriors to kill the possessed man as he approaches Mono and finally falls once stabbed through the heart. However, Emmon finds a newly whole Dorman possessing Wanda's body and transforming its host into a shadowy giant. While his men flee, Lord Emmon casts the ancient sword into a small pool at the back of the temple's hall to evoke a whirlwind of light that consumes Dorman and Wanda. After fleeing with the bridge connecting to the temple collapsing behind him, forever isolating the Forbidden Land from the rest of the world, Emmon expresses hope that Wanda may be able to atone for his crimes should he have survived. Back in the temple, the revived Mono awakens and finds Agro limping into the temple with an injured hind leg. Mono follows Agro to the pool into which Wanda and Dorman were pulled by Emmons' spell, finding a male infant with tiny horns on his head. She takes the child with her, following the horse to higher levels of the Shrine of Worship, and arrives at a secret garden within the shrine as the game ends. Connections to ICO Shadow of the Colossus is considered both a spiritual successor and prequel to ICO. For several months during and after the game's release, the game's director and lead designer, Fumito Ueda, maintained that the game's status as a prequel was simply his personal take on the game and not necessarily its canon nature, as he largely intended for players to decide the specifics of the story for themselves, but he confirmed the two do have a connection. Moreover, the shadowy figures which appear in the Shrine of Worship are connected to the shadows which the player must fight in ICO. Both games feature horned characters for protagonists. The Queen's Sword from ICO is also available as a bonus unlockable item. Both games also use unique fictional languages. Development with a team of 35 people, Shadow of the Colossus began development in 2002 under the project name Nico and was intended to be a sequel to ICO. An early technology demo for the project shown at the DICE Summit in 2003 depicted a group of masked, horned boys riding horses while attacking and defeating a colossus. 
However, Fumito Ueda expressed that, at the time, it was simpler to reuse the character design of ICO's protagonist, and that he never explicitly desired a sequel to ICO. Japanese pre-orders of Shadow of the Colossus later included a bonus DVD with the concept video, a trailer describing Nico's plot, and an introduction the development team states they wanted to use in Shadow of the Colossus. Weda and producer Kenji Kaido held their team to a high standard throughout production. An admitted perfectionist, Weda felt that only one or two out of 500 artists who applied to work on Shadow of the Colossus met his criteria, and often demanded thorough changes in design until it matched his vision. For his part, Kaido challenged the programmers to meet the concept of realistic physics in relation to the movement of the colossi and the subsequent effect this movement would have for Wanda, both in terms of how he might be displaced and how he may be able to use this movement to his advantage. For instance, if a colossus were to shake, Kaido wanted Wanda's position to shift realistically in response. Additionally, if a colossus a limb was currently horizontal, Kaido wanted the player to be able to run across the limb as though it were any other flat surface. He referred to these two concepts as player dynamics and reactions, and organic collision deformation. The realistic physics engine produced as a result required that faster colossi had to be smaller as well. Weda wished the game to have a unique presentation and change how both players and developers perceived the idea of what bosses should be in video games. To achieve this, he ensured that the game's only enemies would be the 16 colossi, that they could only be approached one at a time, and that they would have various behavior patterns. Though limiting the presence of enemies to only bosses was partly intended to differentiate the game from others, Weda also expressed that it was to ensure that the programmer's focus was entirely on the colossi so that their quality would be as high as possible. In accordance with this focus upon the colossi, and his preference for simple controls, he intended that one button on the game controller be used solely for targeting the colossi during battles. A theme of companionship between the player and an AI-controlled partner was a concern for Weda. In ICO, this theme was presented through the protagonist and the character Yoda, whom the player was required to work with and protect while navigating the game's environments. Similarly, a key element in Shadow of the Colossus is the relationship between Wanda and his horse, Agro. Intended to be a realistic representation of a horse, Agro will occasionally ignore commands. In the UEDA's words, a real horse doesn't always obey. It's not like a car or a motorcycle, it won't always turn when you say, turn. However, he has admitted that the team had to seek her balance in how often Agro did not respond to commands so as to not sacrifice playability in the pursuit of realism. All elements of the game, including audio, gameplay and visuals, were used to achieve an atmosphere of a lonely hero, which Weda considered important in the development of the game. Lighting, in particular, was used to establish a dark, fearsome setting for the Forbidden Land, while the protagonist's sword would provide a means of navigation that was direct and only expressible visually. Like ICO, Shadow of the Colossus uses a distinct style of lighting. The game's engine uses elements such as desaturated colors, motion blur and partial high dynamic range rendering with a heavy emphasis on bloom lighting. A PlayStation 3 remastered version of ICO and Shadow of the Colossus was announced at Tokyo Game Show 2010 and released in September 2011. Developed by Bluepoint Games, both were improved graphically to take advantage of the PlayStation 3's hardware and HDTVs, and now run in up to 1920 by 1080 or upscaled from 960 by 1080, with numerous other improvements implemented. Audio While the game has an extensive orchestral soundtrack, the music is only heard during cutscenes and colossus encounters. While time spent at the Shrine of Worship and traversing the landscape is silent save for the sounds made by the protagonist his horse and their surroundings. 
the open nature of the game world and lack of life, coupled with this limited use of music, aids in establishing an atmosphere of solitude, similar to that of ICO. On December 7, 2005, a soundtrack album containing music from the game was released only in Japan, titled Wonder and the Colossus Original Soundtrack, Roar of the Earth. There are currently no announced plans to release the album in other territories. The game's score was composed by Kao Tani, whose previous video game work included the soundtracks to the PlayStation 2 flight simulator Sky Odyssey and the PlayStation shooter Philosoma. He has also worked on several of the 1990s-era game Ray films, as well as a variety of anime. Roar of the Earth won the award for Soundtrack of the Year in the US-based video game magazine Electronic Gaming Monthly. All music composed by Kao Tani. PAL release. The PAL version of the game was released in February 2006. Much like the PAL release for ICO, the game came in cardboard packaging displaying various pieces of artwork from the game, and contained four art cards. The game also came with a making of documentary, a trailer for ICO and a gallery of concept art accessible from the game's main menu. Sony Computer Entertainment also re-released ICO in PAL territories at the time of Shadow of the Colossus's release, both to promote the game through ICO's reputation, and to allow players who did not buy ICO during its original limited release to complete their collections. Some confusion has arisen in PAL regions concerning the official name of the protagonist primarily because of the manual's usage of Wanda, while the North American manual and the game itself uses the name Wanda. In fact, the Japanese version of the game spells the name of Wanda as, which is also the common transliteration of the English name Wanda, hence the mistake in the manual.